up, this is, and this isn't in a graph format, but can be seen in your financial statements. At the end of fiscal year 2013, the city's general fund deficit was approximately $12.9 million. At the end of last fiscal year, that deficit was approximately $19.1 million. So the city did make strides this year to decrease the deficit by approximately $6 million. Now that was due to a lot of various reasons. There was a one, a one-time revenue source of about a million dollars from Consumers Energy. They went back and did a look back study on some of the things that they were charging the city for. And so there was a refund there. That revenue will not be there on a go forward basis. Also, there was cuts to retiree health care costs where the retirees were paying more of their, their health care than what they had in the past. That resulted in several million dollars of savings in the general fund. As you are aware, that ruling was not upheld by the Court of Appeals, so the city will need to look at that for the current fiscal year that you're in, fiscal year 14, and then also on a go forward basis and what do those, what does that appeal court ruling, how does that affect the city on a go forward basis? Also, there has been some layoffs and there's been a really strong push by management and department heads to really contain their costs and to watch their budget as well as capital items being put off until future years. And so we know at some point you will have to replace those capital items. And so that's kind of just a quick snapshot of the general fund for the end of the, for, for the whole fiscal year 13 and where it ended up. And I, that was really all we had planned to go over. I know we spent quite a bit of time before this going over a lot more detail with the council, but we'd be happy to go into any more detail that that um, Mr. Kincaid would like or any of the other council members at this time. The, the only thing I'd like for you to make the point that the audit was completed on time and filed at the state yep. and it was filed at the state on time this year, is that correct? Yes, it was filed before the deadline, um, which was December 31st, but it was filed around December 20th this year. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Councilman Freeman? Yeah, I made a motion that we uh, accept the audit. Present. It's been moved and supported to receive and file the audit. Discussion? Yeah, Mr. President. Mr. Mays? Yeah, when I heard you ask the question, had it been filed on time, I did see in state law that it has to be filed within six months. And that six months would have been December 31st. Mm -hmm. And so if it's been filed and received on time, clarify what we're doing now after the fact. We're receiving and filing the audit for the city of Flint. Okay, so it's a normal procedure that we do that after, after the fact. After the state has received it and reviewed it, yes. Okay. This is normal. All right, thank you. Okay, it's been moved and supported to receive and file. Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Poplar? Yes. Mr. Nolden? Yes. Mr. Freeman? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Neely? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. The vote is nine yes, zero no to receive and file the audit. Thank you very much. You. Mr. President. Mr. Mays? Yeah, Mr. President, if I may, I noticed that there's a special order update by emergency manager, um, Mr. Darnell Early, and that's a special order. And if I may, I'm going to try to probably ask that we suspend the rules or put it in a formal motion because unless Mr. Early or the council objects, I'm hoping that Mr. Early will attend this meeting and hear what some of the public has to say. And so what I'm trying to get at is this. Whether it's the mayor, Mr. Early, or whatever, this meeting was scheduled to start at 5.30. The public was here. They're here now, and I know for a fact that some of the public want Mr. Early to hear what, he had, what they have to say. I don't know how long this special order will last. Maybe Mr. Early or you or somebody could shed light on it for me. If it's not going to last long and inconvenience the public or Mr. Early don't mind, I really have an inkling and a 
You know, it's in my mind and heart for the public to be heard first. Mr. Early, hear some of what, what the public got to say, and then we proceed with the special order. Now, if um, I can put it in the form of a motion to suspend the rules and do it that way, I'll see if it is it's a second or dis informal discussion, or even Mr. Early, maybe he'll give the courtesy to the public. But that's what I'm hoping can happen here today. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Early, special order. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Mays made a motion for us to suspend the public or the uh, special order until the end of the meeting so that Mr. Early would have to stay here and uh, tell the public. No. I don't believe. Mr. Mr. President, I also extended the courtesy to Mr. Early to um, agree to that so he could hear the public. Or I also said that he could give us an idea how long it would take. I'm just trying to be courteous to the public first and foremost with an, wanting Mr. Early to hear them. And I'm trying to be, you know, courteous to the decorum of this council meeting as well. So when he got up, I don't know if he was going to get up to agree or shed some light. But, yeah, I did put a motion on the floor, but my colleagues have been courteous, and I think we're being courteous. So if the motion can stand until we hear what Mr. Early say, um, then I think we could know from my colleagues whether it would get a support. Well, the special order is for Mr. Early to give us an, uh, an update on his um, plan that he has submitted or is about to submit to the state. Has been and if he wants to respond um, to, to your request to stay to the end of the meeting, I don't think he's planning on leaving until the meeting's over, but um, at this time, the special order is for Mr. Early to give us an update on his plan. But, so. Mr. President, point of order, in fact, there's a motion on the floor. And, in fact, the order of business would be to entertain a second based on what you said. I know that I've got to say point of order. There's a motion on the floor. Okay, there's a motion on the, on the floor. Is there support for it? Oh, Mr. Neely? I'm sorry. There's... There's a motion on the floor. Right, but I wanted to suspend it. The question, I don't think the question was answered. Were you planning on staying after the special order? Were you planning on staying after the special order? Were you planning on staying after uh, the special, the special order after you present your information to the council, or were you? Mr. President and to the members of the council, it was my plan to take about 20 minutes and run through the items under the special order and I had every intention of being here until the meeting concluded. Okay. I, I would accept that. Okay. So? Mr. President, if I may, and this would lay that to rest, but Mr. Early, do you mind whether the public go first? Through you, Mr. President, to Mr. Early, do you really mind? Well, I want to get the reports out. I want to take care of that business, and then whatever uh, the remainder of the agenda uh, should pretty much stay intact the way that it is. Mr. President, I withdraw my motion. Thank you. Mr. Early, on the special order, um, you, you may proceed and give us an update um, on your report. Thank you, Mr. President. And to the members of the City Council, there are obviously a number of items that have transpired since your last meeting as a council, and certainly uh, some that have happened as recently as the last couple of weeks. And I would like to call Mr. Uh, uh, Ambrose and Mr. Bay, the attorney, forward to talk a little bit about uh, the issue of the Sixth Court of Appeals ruling on retiree health care. And those of you who heard the detail of the auditor's presentation know how important this issue is to our ongoing uh, solvency in the city of Flint. And so I would like for the city attorney to just give you a brief uh, discussion on where we're headed with that and following him, uh, the finance director, to talk a little bit financially about what that impact potentially has on the city. This case is called Welch v. City of Flint. It's a case that's pending in the federal district court in Detroit before Judge Ternow. 
Um, it is a case that was brought by a group of retirees. Uh, as you may recall, uh, Emergency Manager Mike Brown issued a number of orders that modified health care benefits to existing employees and to retirees. Uh, union contracts were amended. A, a number of things happened to modify uh, health care benefits that the cities offered due to the financial emergency. Uh, this group of retirees filed a federal lawsuit seeking to stop those changes. At the very beginning of the lawsuit, they filed a motion for an injunction. An injunction is asking the court to stop the uh, modifications during the pendency while the case is going on. Uh, the district court in Detroit granted that motion, so the judge in Detroit stopped the city from implementing those changes. The city filed an appeal to the Sixth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals uh, in Cincinnati, and that court issued a stay, meaning the injunction was stopped. That occurred in June of 2013. So since June of 2013, uh, the city was permitted to make the changes to the retiree health care benefits. On January 3rd, 2014, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals issued an opinion uh, and, and held uh, that the, um, the federal district court's injunction should be reinstated, meaning this, the, the injunction against the city for making the changes to the retiree health care benefits uh, was uh, reinstated. Um, it is important to understand a couple of things about that. First is that the case is still going on. Uh, we will be in litigation probably for some time. Uh, this injunction came at the very start of the case. Um, the, the question at its core is whether modifying those health care benefits were reasonable and necessary to remedy severe economic problems facing the city, whether that, that change was reasonable and necessary. The federal district judge uh, concluded in granting the injunction that the city hadn't fully proven its case under the law. The city still has that 